Friday's spiritual advocacy. That concept came about in terms of advocating for our spirits. Here, it should feel like a safe place. It's a place that I was able to create within me through the help of Miriam Paul, my longtime therapist. And it's a place where I work to become aware of my attack thoughts on myself that is often in the form of shame and fears. And that helps me to become far more aware of when others are projecting. And so here we work to build skills to become aware of those attack thoughts. And I want to point out that a lot of the concepts that I refer to and that I share in the book came from Miriam. It came from, look at how old, look at this worksheet. This is a worksheet that she created that basically is fear or fear and judgment or love. We have a choice every day. And she would ask, you know, which do you, which do you want to create in your life? But she re reminded me always, like, Nadia, you are not a body. So every time I say you are not a body, nor the thoughts your mind makes, that came from Miriam. Yet I had, had to, I had to believe it, and I had to create a connection to a higher power that infinitely reminds me of that we are not bodies nor the thoughts our mind makes and i'm so so grateful that miriam is here she has decades long of experience as a marriage and family therapist trains hundreds of students manages offices and that i still have her as a therapist um, is something that i'm deeply deeply grateful for I was able to call her on Friday after what was one of the most profoundly beautiful experiences of my life, where I was able to implement these things, along with some step work, step work where I'm working on understanding my limitations to have a manageable life. And by doing both of those things, it allowed another person to not only become closer to their true selves yet for us to allow like that higher power to bring us closer and to guide us and i mean i, I don't know what could be a more beautiful experience of love and so oh i was super super happy to hear that miriam is working on a book I think your sound is off. How do I? There we go. I can hear you. So what is this book that you're working on? And couldn't there be a hundred? <laughs> I'm it, your sound not is off anything. again. I'm not I don't... sure. All right. okay. I can hear you. Presently, the title is uh, The Infinite Possibility of Relationships. Because I believe, you know, relationships, if anything will help us heal, it's relationships. So I think relationships are opportunities to heal. Because until we understand this, until we understand this, really the bottom line of relationships is not a happy one. I mean, look at all the divorce rates, you know, um, because, you know, I differentiate between special relationships and unconditionally loving relationships. But most people enter relationships as special. And by that, I mean, they are intending to get something from the other. It has nothing to do with uh, true love, unconditional love. It only has to do with what what I'm going to get from you. And after the romantic stage, you know, if I'm not getting that, then I'm not happy with you. <laughs> You're not, yeah, well, I'm making you responsible for my okay. happiness unwittingly and unconsciously. Because what I think would it just, 
there's a wonderful book written 30 years ago by Harville Hendricks and his wife that says a lot about this, even that many years ago. But, but you know, the truth of the matter is relationships have such a possibility of bringing us home to who we, who we really are. But, but unless you know what's going on and you have the tools, then it's the divorce rate we see really, you know. And actually relationships can be very lonely, very isolating and very feeling not safe. Of course, these are things these are things right. that we're looking for it, in childhood, you know. And I relate very much because I know as a trauma survivor that the mode of disassociation had me very much so, and I have to watch it all the time in a pattern of relationships with emotionally unavailable people. And, and it was really traumatizing. And, and then on the opposite end was like addictive love where the passion is there and then like the ego and the attachment. And, you know, are those the patterns Absolutely. that you see? Um, it's, it's really helpful to remember that we did not come into this body in this world believing that there was something wrong with us. In my case, I thought there was something innately wrong with me that was unfixable. But anyway, nobody seems to come out of childhood without beliefs, some variation of I'm not good enough, et cetera, et cetera, based on the experiences that we have in trying to adapt to the environments we come into. We came in whole, perfect, and complete. We are still whole, perfect, and complete. That That is our innate nature. Our innate nature is unconditionally loving. It is. However, in the journey of adapting to the environments, well, we lost that connection. We lost that awareness. So mostly, I believe therapy is about unblocking ourselves so that we can come home to to remembering and and honoring that knowing. In other words, if I'm in a relationship as a special relationship, relationship I'm trying to get something from you but if I'm in a an unconditionally loving relationship what I'm doing is I'm sharing the love that I am with you which is a completely different right you know it's a completely different situation entirely but in order to get to that place where we remember the love that we are and share it out of that love and kindness it takes work it takes a lot of work and that's where that's where the tools a come in you know work. you were talking about one of those tools which i call working with triggers uh, because triggers are amazing in that they help us identify the wounded parts in us if we but understood how to use right. them you know um and that's you know what my book i just wanted to be something that's so helpful if you just knew it if we just knew if we could say to this guy that we we think we we're in love with and we want to marry you know, did you know that relationships, that nobody wants to hear that. Relationships are about healing the wounds of our childhood. You know? And you wrote, first remember, relationships are about healing and anything coming out of someone else's mouth is about them. That, Their that's story, the thoughts, that's and beliefs the first step projected of my healing. on you. It's, it's, uh, those are the four steps of working with triggers. I mean, once you just understand a few of these things, it just changes everything. It can just, you know, it's amazing. I remember for myself, and I continue to remember it, when I, when I realized that when you trigger me, we used to think that you're the cause of our upset. You know, you caused me to feel this way. Mm -hmm. But in reality, all you did was trigger me and that trigger went into my story, my ego program, I call it a program, and I put the meaning on it. I, we're always putting the meaning right. on what, so we used to think that we're victims. Now we're not victims. We're, we have the awareness now to really appreciate what really is going on. And that, that, that allows us to begin to connect with one another instead of disconnect. It's all about connection and safety right. and 
being understood and being able to hear somebody, right? Instead of, you know, not being able to. I don't think it's possible, at least in my experience, again, like I referred to, get a pattern of emotionally unav unavailable folk, you know, and then a phase of more of a love addiction and, and the experience of growing with somebody and allowing one to walk in their fears or, or process a triggered core wound. I, I do not believe it's possible unless there is a belief about the our core nature, which comes from a belief in higher power, which comes through a strong connection with the creator or the infinite and a God, whatever, however you want to word it. You know, I don't think that there can, or, or at least in my experience, that that safety is really possible with another to do this kind of work individually and or individually yet as a network yeah i use the you know i use the term unconditionally unconditional love mm -hmm. i don't you know i just don't want to put people off with words that they can't understand or they don't you know, yeah You're right you know but right. that 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 word could mean anything it could mean creator it could mean god it could mean higher power it could mean my best understanding you know it could mean whatever really works for you you know well, because then just the day-to-day, -day, like just the ego mind and where we go with the he said, she said, and they did, they, you know, and every, and, and it's so hard not to personalize and, and get triggered. And so, yeah, I, um, I think you say how, when we understand that it's about a person's story and their core beliefs yeah. and their stuff. Well, I think, I think it's really, really important. Um, you know, to understand, um, I'm trying to think of, um, it's, it's really important to understand that what we came to believe is who we are has a belief system that's based on fear and judgment. And as long as we're in that program of the ego and the fear and judgment side, there is absolutely no unconditional love there. In fact, the ego is terrified of love for fear of losing it. So, so much of the work is waking up right. and becoming more conscious of what the ego mind and program is, how it's dictating our lives. We're just like little puppets on a string, blah, da, 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 and we never even realize it. You know, because the ego knows not love. The ego right. is looking for getting something from the other. It's not looking to give something because it doesn't have it. The ego does not have unconditional love. It only has special love, trying to get something from the other. And believe me, until we do the healing work and we go in and we connect with that hurt little girl or that part in us that's feeling abandoned and not heard, Boy. then we're gonna keep projecting it out there on the other person. You're supposed to make me feel good. Right. And you're not, you know. You just made you just hurt my feelings. So the way we abandon Yes, I'm so, and you've sorry, seen I'm me through set up in one minute. The way two of the that, ways we abandon ourselves yes. is to judge ourselves unmercifully and also to make others responsible for how we feel. Yes. So, do you want to give some examples? Oh, <laughs> well, you, I, you can no, use. No, I, yeah, I could. I think you could do better. But... <laughs> what are examples of how we judge ourselves so, mercifully? Or, I mean, <laughs> yeah, these, these are overstatements. But, but I want to get to um, the part where you say. So yes. It, we have to heal our core wounds so that we're aware of the story and what is, gets triggered from another. 
and then that we can connect to our true selves and not seek not be in our mind only where there's just fear and judgment and have it all fixed by the other instead go within um but when we are triggered this is so important to me even if we haven't done all the healing or we're not aware because it's a constant process life is messy and it comes up all the time like it did a week ago when i called you you know and it's it's equally important that when we are triggered you taught me it is my responsibility to go and, and to heal to to go and use that as an opportunity to take the time to set aside to listen to the little girl and to use that trigger as an opportunity to go and do my healing it's not the other person's job and so this is the set the second part you wrote you are triggered because something within you, your story or beliefs has been pulled up and wants attention. And I love how you wrote this. This is always some pushed under wound or hurt place. So agree that you will take the 100% responsibility for your reaction to the trigger. And, and no, it is actually a gift for healing the dark hidden places within you that block your ability to experience the love that you are can you talk a little bit more about that and whoever's joining miriam is writing a book and has been my longtime therapist and has helped me so much to return to a home within me so when we are triggered it is our response yes and as we do that work you know it's not a quick fix it's not an overnight fix at all it's an ongoing process it's a practice, it's like anything else, but this practice enables that, that young part of you, that part in you that got distracted from her own knowing and her own unconditionally loving self and others, feeling that for herself. Um, I'm just trying to, huh, what? Right. Yeah, so. Yes. So the word, that's why, what, so what happens is every time we connect with the triggered part, and I believe every, we're never triggered for no reason, and I believe every trigger is a part of us that's wounded and or wants to be heard. You know, it, it, it's just like if we don't, if we are unwilling to connect with it, if we don't have the courage to go in there and find out what is it, what is it feeling, um, then, you know, we will distract, we, we, and oh no, it'll, no, and it will continue, the drama. we'll distract ourselves with drugs, alcohol, you know, anything you can think of to, to not have to feel what the trigger is asking us to feel so it can release its hurt part, its feeling abandoned, its feeling not hurt, its feeling whatever it's feeling. So, you know, that, that is part of the coming out from under the burden of believing what the ego is saying we are. I am this not good enough person, right? Right. So um, the, ego, the ego world, as I said, is based on, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. David Hawkins' work, but his work is brilliant. And he has what's called a map of consciousness. And the, the, below the mm -hmm. line on the map, what the ego experiences is pride, anger, desire, fear, grief, apathy, hatred, guilt, and shame. And shame is, you know, guilt is I did something wrong. Shame is I am wrong. So this is the, the world right. that's controlling our behavior and the way we see things is, is are those, that's, that's where it's coming from. It's not coming from love and kindness and, you know, um, joy or fun. No, it's coming from believing those kinds of things. And it, it's, a, it's a world of duality. And duality means right, wrong, good, bad, my way or the highway. But when you go above the line where spirit and love exist, you begin to understand and learn how to live in allowance of what is without judgment. That doesn't mean you like everything. It just means now you're you're not putting the label on it. You're just seeing what it is. Right. 
and, no, and you're, we're, we're, we're not, not projecting, projecting our, as we're going in and working on our own healing and not creating right. more pain right. right for others as long as we look through the ego's eyes and mind then we're into fear and judgment that's it so and we'll yeah. seek to control and, and make wrong and, and be victims and, you know and right. never feel happy <laughs> and never have really a lot well the love that we're offering typically is not unconditional i think i've told you probably a number of times and it won't bore you for long but I learned about, you know, remember when I learned unconditional love with my, my uh, partner who died? Yeah, he share. died four Please years share. ago. And uh, I feel so blessed to, to have um, had that opportunity to um, experience that with a, with a partner. And, um, but what, what I, what I right. realized before I hit that, I mean, when I finally got it to, uh, Unconditional love means loving someone exactly the way they are without a need to change them or fix them. Now, that sounds ridiculous, right? right? But until you do that, you're just going to be irritated at them for all the things they're not doing that they should be doing or you want them to be doing, right? So all you're doing is you're looking at your partner from the eyes of being in allowance without judgment. Now, but the, the interesting part in this for me was when I finally loved him in that deep way, then I could choose to be there or not be there. So if you have a, if right. you have a partner, let's say, who's having sex with another person, and if you love your partner, you, you want them to be happy, don't you, if you love someone? But, but but they seem, yes. they seem happy doing that, or maybe they're just letting off steam. Who knows? But the point is, you can be an allowance of it, but that doesn't mean you have to choose it. And I'm not saying that's what he was doing, because he wasn't. But, but at that point, like I said, you can choose to stay or leave, but you're not leaving out of not loving the person. You're just leaving out of not choosing at that moment that have that person to be the one that you're going through the rest of your life with or whatever right does that make sense right i think it does when you have done your own healing of your wounds and you're not seeking to have the other in in your ego mind to fill a hole or to be the healer for you i think because of who you are and, and your mastery and the work that you do you you have your own like internal peace and connection with the infinite that that you are able to fully love and accept and unconditionally look at the situation well, it, it, and love and then yeah i don't think i had ever greedy. experienced it to that degree uh and for me it's 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 realizing I, also at that point that the body is a communication device so I mean, even though we're in bodies and we, we're sexual beings and, and, you know, sex is a part of it. When you, when you, when you're unconditionally loving someone, it's not the body that's the focus. It's, it's the, it's the, the, the love run, running through you, connecting out of your heart with another person, another being. If you... But then the choice as to what you're comfortable with is to to love oh, but not well, i'm continue. not even focusing on that right now but yeah no i mean i yeah i guess that i know that was not maybe that's not the greatest greatest example of but for me for me i've i've never experienced that that deep of what i really consider is unconditional because there's no real judgment there now you may think what i was saying about the other was judgment no it really wasn't it really i was not in judgment i was just like I said, just it, I was loving me and loving him unconditionally, you know, and after we separated, he got ill and he eventually did die. Um, but, you know, I was 
part of his life and taking food down and taking him to the park and um you know so it, it you know it, it again it's not about i don't know how to explain it it's just it's love unconditional love has nothing to do with what we thought love was i mean special love is not having anything to do with unconditional love and regard because you really Realize that you know we're all in this together. We're, wherever anybody is, that's just where they are. It's not about us, you know. It's right. not about us. And um... and last week, I was able to just accept where another completely was at without judgment? any without any judgment or taking anything personally and it was more like um this is this person processing their own core wound and and having had managed it in such a way for so long and it, just with complete acceptance while i went and did my own processing of what was coming up in me and being triggered and to come to a point of just complete okay infinite what what is the what what am i learning what's coming up and and what will ever come of this i'm i'm ready for whatever and then when it gets to a point where it helped the other to go within them and heal a wound that they had been carrying for so long because I had set my own limitation, knowing my own triggers, knowing my own stuff. It was such a beautiful experience that I had never this experienced is the potential. ever before. This is the possibility of relationship. 